Okay, I'm joined by Brooke uh, Wiles with his uh, Moore Unidrill here. So thank you very much for bringing it for us to look at. No um, problem, thank you for that. Brooke, so if you might start off by just giving me a, or us a little bit of background behind the drill, how you've been involved and how it's evolved as a machine over many years, I think. Yeah, it? absolutely. Um, so Moore Unidrill, as many would know, was established 50 years ago. Um, 1974 by Sam Moore um, and sort of pioneered if you like the direct drilling idea and um, the we're very proud to say that the geometry and coulter design hasn't changed um, so we've maintained that consistency. Um, it stood the test of time. Though. It certainly has yeah it certainly has. Um, we have obviously evolved with farming demands and best practices over the years um, and the, in 2014 we moved to a air drill um, using the Accord metering system and um, we mainly focused on the three metre end of the market um, and also we developed the Guttler Packer on the back um, which has come standard to all the machines. Um, in 2019 um, my family had the privilege of taking the brand forward which we have done and over the past three to four years, we've developed it further with our own style tank, um, still using the Accord metering. Um, and then this year, at the beginning of the year, at Lama, we launched our 1700 litre 50 50 split um, grain and furt machine. Um, and obviously, that is all applicable to the FETF grant scheme. So, that's a little bit of the history about how the company's evolved. So, we're not, we're not the um, newest boy on the block if that makes sense. No, it does, yeah. yeah that's okay, so um, I think it'd be good if you could just talk us through the basic features. Clearly what strikes me is um, we haven't got as much to talk about as some of the others because it's quite simple. So. Yeah, that is one of our key USPs as you say. Um, so predominantly on our drills it's two rows of discs which are cutting a slot then followed by a closing packer. Um, so we have a 415 mil, 6 mil disc, as you can see just here, which is fitted onto a five stud sealed for life bearing. Then we have what we call our infinitely adjustable coulter, which is tungsten tiled, and that runs at generally a 12 mil running depth from the bottom of the disc. Um, and it is a very simple adjustable system. It's a 17 mil spanner, and that coulter can be slid up or down the disc to create more of a slot or if there's more residue to deal with it will cut through. Um, generally we have it all on hydraulic depth control with a very easy scale so the farmer can easily see from the cab what he's setting his roller at um, and obviously the Guttler Packer on the back is what we um, swear by if you like for most situations um, and that is obviously very versatile and obviously based on the sheep hoof principle um, over a square meter you'll have 305 impacts to the soil which is a very good way of closing the slot and ensuring you're getting good seed to soil contact. So you could develop a bit of crumb there just to help? Absolutely. Yep. So obviously you're leaving it still firm on the base of the seed bed but an open top crust to let the seedling grow through. So, so, so basically then drilling depth by yeah, so you're the roller. That's right, and obviously on the mountain machine you'll be using your top link and your link arms to get the machine level. Yeah, and I notice you've got a, a nasty little. Yeah, gauge we've got a nice little, little sure simple you're gauge. Running, you're running pitch level. <laughs> that's it. Um, so, so when you want to adjust the the, the the coulter itself, then that's more to determine how much disc depth you're going to run with. Absolutely. Yeah. So if you've got something, if you're going into heavy cover crop or something that you've got a lot of residue on and you want to cut more of a slot, then sliding the coulter up the disc just gives it a bit more bite, if that makes yeah, sense. It does, yeah. And although it's clearly a direct drill, is it happy working in a degree of cultivation, for example? Is yes, on the 125mm spacing drill, which is what we class as the arable spec, that will work in a lightly cultivated situation. Um, obviously, if it's going straight into ploughing, it might find that that's too fluffy so you might have to be doing a bit of pre-work ahead of that because obviously the disc requires friction to drive it and obviously being a direct drill its primary situation is straight into stubble. 100% so a firm it likes a firm surface which is quite understandable. Yeah. Fair comment. yeah. 
Um, so obviously one thing I haven't touched on is the tank. Now this is the, as I mentioned before, the 1700 litre 50-50 split. Um, as standard on all of these grain and fert drills, we have a hydraulically driven fan, which obviously gives optimum pressure and easy to control with the modern day hydraulics. Um, and then we have twin Accord metering systems. In the centre of the tank, there is a hatch which allows you to amalgamate both tanks. So if you want to be doing all one crop, you can, or if it's a mixture, you can slide that back down. Um, and obviously we've got a nice safety um, rail and easy access ladder as well. Um, the metering units are placed at an optimum um, area for calibration, so the farmer isn't having to reach over everything um, to calibrate. And obviously you can either have this on land wheel drive as this dr drill is here, or we can do a full RDS ISOCAN option, which is ISOBUS compatible and fully variable across the two hoppers. So you could do variable seed rate, seed for whatever. 100%, yeah. 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 And would you normally Siamese the, 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 the two products into the same? We've found best results that way. Um, we are developing other systems where they could be either spread front or back, but that's still work in progress. But yeah, primarily we say straight down the same culture tube. Yeah, no, that, that again makes sense potentially because you're disturbing so little of the ground there isn't quite the ability for as much mineralization so yeah, absolutely. That, that's where i guess then you're looking at relatively low rates of yes 100 yeah. percent. you would you it's a low rate application but it does give the farmer the flexibility to put a starter fertilizer or a um, companion crop with whatever he's drilling and i see you've got the exhausts on there so more or less is it is that getting down to almost gravity as the bottom end? Should be, yeah. That was the idea that you don't get seed bounce out the bottom of the slot. Um, so we put those vents on to assist that. Yeah, yeah. Now that looks, that, that makes sense. Um, so I think a, a few words or discussions would be really useful on your experiences with direct drilling and yep. Farmers, how they transition to direct drilling from, yep. let's say, more of a traditional, if that's where they've been. Yep. Um, do you find that's uh, easy for farmers to do? How, how, are there other things that they should think about and, and, and need to know? Definitely. I think it's a journey. And um, I think what we find with a lot of customers is that they start and trial and test and demo and and it's, it's basically a trial and error. It's down to your, in my belief, it's a good mix of everything that establishes a good farm. And um, I think it isn't an easy move to make, um, but in our experience, we've seen a lot of customers going down the journey and they'll find that certain land types will adapt a lot quicker to a direct drill system. Some require more of a conventional based um, inversion tillage and others will, will adapt very quickly. I, I don't think there's one one rule or one right answer. Um, I think it's a journey and in my experience I'd say try it and see how you get on. There's no, regardless of what anyone tells you, I don't think there's any right or wrong. I, I think that's right it, and depending on the season, depending on the weather, depending on the field you're in, soils as you say you farm, you couldn't have a prescriptive approach can you? You have no. to be flexible with it. Definitely and I think coming through the autumn and spring we've just had, I don't think there's one drill that would do all conditions. I think it's a case of, from a manufacturer's point of view, you've got to be adapting your machine to the weather or to what your conditions are. And, and with that in mind, um, because the drill is so simple, how important is it not to create problems? For example, it's a pretty small tractor that you need really, isn't it? Yeah, so 100%. Creating problems with, with, with compaction, I, I guess, I see you've got some probably top-notch Bridgestone VFs <laughs> here on this on this. We track. certainly have. Would that be something that you'd be quite keen on? I would definitely having? be promoting whoever your tractor dealer is or whoever your tyre supplier is. It's worth having a conversation because if you can get your running pressure set right and going on manufacturer guidance, then you're not having to eradicate wheelings or worry about leaving wheelings in a potentially compaction area. Um, you'll notice we don't have an option for eradicating the wheeling marks. But that is definitely a very, very good point you make. Yeah, and, and I think when it comes to 
control of grass weeds and it, as part of within a rotation, you know, delay drilling spring crops, clearly there are, there are potential hurdles with delay drilling sometimes, particularly with the season we've just had, but um, again, if you can minimise the level of disturbance as you are doing with a the drill, then that's probably a benefit. Definitely, yeah. Um, minimal disturbance obviously does help a clean crop, um, in, my, in my argument, um, and I think that's where the direct drilling comes into its own remit. So I think just as a, a bit of a summary as well with regard to the, the, the machines at the moment then, you're mainly focusing on the, 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 the smaller, narrower, th this width end? Yes, market. yeah, so 3 and 3.4 is probably what we'd call as our sweet spot and um, we certainly find there's, there's plenty to develop on a 3 metre drill and um, we can keep it as simple or make it as complicated as you like. Now that sounds good and... So again, with, with, with your findings, no one machine is probably optimum for all conditions. Um, it could well be that the farm needs to consider two styles, a tine and a disc-based drill sometimes. Yes, definitely, yeah. But at least in this respect, it's not massive cost for doing that, is it? Yeah, definitely, and I think from a manufacturer's point of view, keeping the cost of one of these drills down gives the farm the flexibility to maybe have one, two or maybe more um, to account for different weather patterns, different soil types. And what you want to do actually is where the soil is, yeah, 100%, yeah. Okay, now well, uh, very many thanks for uh, bringing the machine here and talking pleasure. to me about it. Our pleasure. And uh, yeah, I wish you all the best for the rest of the show. Thank you very much. Thanks, Philip.